So recently I kept hearing about this place called the 80s Video Shop, straight to video. A super authentic setup, late 80s, early 90s VHS rental store that had been created in Alfreton, which is a place near Derby here in England, not too far from me. So obviously I was intrigued. I hit them up on Instagram and spoke to the co-owner Rob, saw some pictures and thought, oh, this looks super impressive. Can I come and film it with my Slimehouse crew? So the other night, myself, Rox and Bentlegs jumped in the car on a very rainy evening and made a very impromptu and unplanned visit to this amazing place. Here's how we got on. Slimehouse TV, myself, Theo Kane, on what is probably one of the last missions of 2022. We've got bent legs on wheels and on second cam. We've got Rocky Robin on the first cam. Hold tight, the Slime Alliance, the Slime Renegades and everybody else that's locked in. Today we're off on a little mission out and a bit of a random one to Darby to a place called the 80s Video Shop. So a dude there is set up like an old school 80s video shop. It's full of action movies, horror movies, lots of genre stuff and some more well-known stuff and things. And judging by the pictures, it looks incredible. I worked on a shop like this a few years ago with Arrow Video and Celluloid Screams. We did a pop-up shop and built our own VHS store and we thought that was impressive, but judging by the pictures of what this guy's built, like we weren't even close to how cool this shop looks. So I'm really looking forward to getting there, checking it out, having a nosy around and seeing how we get on. So let's do this, pow. So we headed down the motorway to this place called Alfreton and I was actually super surprised how quick we got there. I was expecting this to be like an hour and a half car journey, but we was there in like 40 minutes. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to film any of the outside because not only was it going dark, but like I said in the intro, it was a very rainy evening. So we just put the umbrellas up, grabbed the equipment and headed straight inside. And soon as I arrived, it was honestly like we'd stepped into a fucking time machine. I walked in through the little foil curtain and I was just greeted by hundreds of ex-rental VHS tapes. Now, like I said, I had spoken to the owners on Instagram a little bit, but only briefly. So it was really cool to meet them in person. And it was one of them. We got there and then started talking. And these two are like the nicest guys ever and also really into this stuff like I am. So it was like a good 20 minutes had gone past of us just talking and nabbing before I was like, oh shit, we should probably roll the cameras and do some kind of intro and actually like start filming an episode of Slime House. Because I could have talked about old movies with these guys all evening. So, do you want to give me a tour of the place? And then we've, sure we've turned up and we've just started talking as you do because we're just both into this stuff. But if you want to give me like a give me a tour of this room first like the areas in this room and then we'll you can take me through to the yeah the definitely area and things. when me and chris set this up we wanted like the old just to bring that vibe and atmosphere of an old school video shop when and it's you got go it in, as soon as you walk in i felt the vibe i felt it we wanted that authenticity so you've got your sections your action your comedy your horror your sci-fi I think only thing we're missing at the moment is an adult section, which we'll have to get to. Which is used to be on one of these curtains, yeah. I remember back in the day. I was never allowed behind. Now, I'm somebody that's old enough to have remembered going to these VHS stores when I was a kid. I was very young, but I still remember going into them. And I fully got the vibes of when I used to go to the VHS rental store when I was a kid. This place is set out incredible. So once we'd stopped talking and I had a chance to start looking around and appreciating some of the titles that they got on display, I noticed some of my favourites, some classic Stallone, Cyborg Van Damme, They Live, After the Fall of New York, Creepshow, some absolute bangers. Now, I've been around a lot of VHS collections. Like I say, I've got a big VHS collection myself, and I've even ran a VHS pop-up shop with Celluloid Screams and Arrow Video years ago. So I have been around lots of VHS tips, but one of the things that I loved about this place, and one of the things that actually was the thing that drew me to it the most, and it sounds really weird, but it was the setup of the racking on the walls. So back in the day, these old video shops used to have these vacuum foam shelves on the wall where you could display a VHS tape side on, and that's how you could see if you wanted to rent the movie or not. But in the early 2000s, when they got rid of all the VHS rental shops, what they must have done is just took those rackings off the wall and smashed them up and threw them in skips because nobody wanted them. All these years later now, I would love to get hold of some of them. That would be the perfect way to display my tapes in my house. So being able to go into this VHS store and see the original racking on the wall was the thing that buzzed me out more than seeing the tapes themselves. 
I was also asking Chris where he got them from and apparently he borrowed them off a friend who is a big VHS collector and he'd actually taken some of these vacuum foam shelving units to a vacuum foaming factory and asked if they wanted to reproduce some and he wasn't bothered. Imagine that. If you're a factory out there and you can reproduce these old vacuum foam VHS wall displays then get in touch because I will buy 10 of them. But Vin actually went to like a, a manufacturer's and took one. He says, can you reproduce these? Oh, did they? And it, they weren't interested. Oh, they were He's like, what oh, the fuck? Yeah, yeah. They had one in my school. I wish I had not known that. Yeah. I'd have been pressing them all day, man. And what I was confused about is whether you actually rented videos out or whether it was uh, just a straight gallery, just something for you to just enjoy your collection with other people. Yeah, and... essentially one massive man cave at yeah. the end of the day. But yeah, the question everybody asks it's when they come It's not a functioning in, rental it's store. It's not. It, maybe one day, if the, I mean, the way that video is going, it's becoming more and more popular. Yeah. But, um, Right now, the question people ask when they come in is like, do you rent these? And that's got to be just curiosity because not many people have got a video player these days. No. Uh, but yeah, it's just essentially just a museum with its own gift shop and a couple of other little things which I'll show you as well. Now, like Rob said, this is not an actual active VHS rental store. You can't go there and rent tapes. You can't go there and buy tapes. It's very much an art gallery, very much a long-standing exhibition and somewhere that you can go and get those vibes of being in a video shop back in the day. That's the thing because everything's streaming now and like any one of these videos, I mean, 90% of this weird stuff you can just get straight on YouTube and yeah. things. So th there isn't that urgency to, to see this stuff. But back in the day, coming to the video shop was like a, a big deal. Oh, 100%. And, you, and like we were saying with the video case, is a lot of them are painted very falsely advertised because you'd see this and you're like fucking hell that looks unbelievable look at that look at that movie look at that explosion and it weren't even in the film so you'd you would get films and take them home and be very disappointed one, one golden rule in hindsight if it's paintings on the back and not photographs that's like maybe a stay away yeah, from it right. it's yeah. not going to be yeah. in the film <laughs> also as another attraction for people to go and check out the video shop and presumably just because they've got the space to do it they've also got their own escape room and if you're a fan of an American werewolf in London, then you're going to love this because it's all themed like the slaughtered lamp up from that movie. We like to try and vary it up for people. A few like 80s, early 90s bits of nostalgia in there as well. Uh, we've also got an escape room. Yeah, there's a full escape room in here. Set out like the slaughtered lamp. Exactly. Any fans of American werewolf in London know the slaughtered lamp. So Chris, who does this with me, one of his favourite films is American werewolf in London. So we've got our own slaughtered lamp themed escape room. Or we can have teams in here. And I've never done an escape room. Explain to me like, how that works. So basically, teams of four people get locked in here. There's a key which is in the box all padlocked up and there's clues all around the room. They have a time limit of an hour to get out And of you here. just lock someone in and say, this yeah. is how you get Figure out. Figure out the codes. Okay. People who are fans of the film will recognize a few little nods, such as the pineapple, That's which is classic, on there. That's a classic one, it does. Like up the to... Alamo. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we've got the dartboard as well, uh, which is famous in the film, where you made me miss. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You thing. made me miss. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check out the cinema. Then what they've also got built into another room in there is their own private screening room. And I fucking love this because a lot of people also might not know that Slimehouse originally started as an underground cinema. Myself and my friends decked out the entire basement of a vintage centre that I used to work at and we turned it into our own private cinema. We had a bar, we had a pool table, we had a giant projector screen and every single month me and all of my friends would get together and do double bills of 80s action and horror movies. So they've got their own private screening room down here, very reminiscent of Slimehouse Cinema, which has this, that's how this channel actually started originally as our own underground movie cinema before it was a YouTube channel or anything. This is based on this. the Overlook Theatre in The Shining. Yeah, they all themed these rooms, I love it. And this is a little chill spot. So this is not somewhere that you advertise films? Not at the moment, it's something we want to do. I mean, it's because of how small it is at the moment, it's not really viable to be a cinema where we're advertising and stuff like that, but hopefully next year we can be doing private parties and all that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, but you, you, and your, you and your people can uh, yeah, exactly. stream what you want to stream. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love it. And appropriately, another American werewolf thing, we've got Jack rotting away on the oh, back Oh yeah, look seat. at that. In the back of the cinema. Mixing your genres. Exactly. Mixing your movies, but same genre, but <laughs> yeah. mixing your IPs. 
Another thing that makes this like a super authentic video shop as well is that 99.9% .9 of all the videos that are on display are all X rent or big box VHS tapes. So if you're new to the VHS collecting scene, you don't really know too much about it. Basically, there's two types of VHS that you could get here in England at least. You'd get sell throughs and you'd get big box X rental VHS tapes. And it's the big box X rental VHS tapes that are the ones that us collectors collect. They're the ones that's the most sought after. They're the ones that are desirable to collectors. The smaller sell through tapes are never really worth any money never have been they might be worth money in another 10 years but currently and it's always been the same they've always been the ones that are not really that desirable to collectors it's that old cycle with like star wars toys and stuff like that they became collectible because nobody thought they was going to be yeah. collectible everyone ripped them open played with them and ironically they're the ones which people want these yeah days. yeah sell throughs not worth nothing yeah. people like very rare people want them but the, the big box are what it's all about so like you get a small VHS sell-through tape like this and then you get a big box VHS tape and it's these big box VHS tapes are the ones that you would see in video shops back in the day. So when I go into this place and 99.9% .9 of the video tapes that are on display are all X rental VHS tapes, I know it's run by somebody that really gets this stuff and really knows what it's about. In fact, the only sell-through VHS tapes that they had there on display was the wrestling section but that was awesome just to see that they had it and also the ones that they'd used to build a Christmas tree. Now, like I said, when you walk into this place, it is like a time machine. You very much get hit with those 80s vibes. So what I wanted to do is imagine I just walked into a VHS store back in the late 80s, early 90s. I had three films that I were going to rent and I wanted to give you three Theo Kane approved recommendations that if you was going to go into a VHS store and rent three tapes, or if you're doing like a triple bill movie night or something like that and you want three bangers to watch that you might not have seen before, these are my three that I recommended while I was there. So often when you'd come to a video shop, VHS rental shop back in the day, they'd have deals on like three for a fiver for the weekend, five for a tenner for the week or whatever like that. So I'm gonna give you like three recommendations that if I were coming into a video shop, let's say it's what, 1989, I'm gonna pick up a couple of movies to take home that night. These are three that I wanna recommend. And they've got so many cool ones in here, so many bangers. We've got whole sections, like action is obviously one of my go-to sections, and horror, of course. And there's one horror film that I always go to. It's actually my favorite horror film of all time, so you've probably seen me talk about it on this channel more than once, but it's The Blob from 1988, the year that I was born. And it's a remake of the original Blob, but this is a movie that I feel like it's getting its dues paid a little bit more in this day and age, but like for the last 20 years or something, I've been like mentioning this film to people and they've not seen it. Have you all seen The Blob 1988? You love the blob. Yeah, you've seen The Blob 1988. It's an absolute banger. Like the effects in this film are like second to none. We watched it again recently with my little goddaughter. She loved it. She's probably too young to be watching a certificate 18, but she was raised on Predator and things. It's a whole separate conversation, but the effects in it still hold up. It's got everything, it's got dope characters, it's got a real good pace to it. In, in a, a day and age where everything's like so heavily CGI'd, this is all practical effects. So yeah, Chuck Russell's The Blob is always a movie that I uh, always go to. Yeah, oh, she's gorgeous in that, yeah, I love it. Her and the main guy, they're both fucking awesome, like, yeah, they... Kevin Dillon, Kevin Dillon, yeah, that's right, Matt Dillon's brother, yeah. Next up, another absolute banger if we're moving into a more action section. I usually like to do a double bill, I'll do an action film and I'll do a, a horror film and... So we're gonna pick out an action film and this is one that's always a go-to movie, Invasion USA. If you're gonna watch a Chuck Norris movie, in my opinion, Chuck Norris's Invasion USA is always like a go-to film. It's got so much going on, and what was really awesome about this film is that they was given an entire town to destroy. They was given a whole town with houses and a mall and everything, and they was gonna put a road through it. So they were like, yeah, just do whatever you wanna do. There's a really good documentary on Canon and the two guys that owned Canon Cinema back in the day, the Canon Distribution. They had so many movies in production, and if you wanna know more about Invasion USA and everything that they had going on, then check out Electric Boogaloo, the Canon documentary. But yeah, they got a whole town to destroy. And as a filmmaker, as, an, as a director that likes to make action stuff and big explosive things, that must have been like a dream come true. So there's scenes in that film where they're driving through a mall on a truck, smashing through shop windows. There's houses of kids and families getting bazookaed pretty much point blank from the back of a truck by the baddie in it, who is like literally, in my opinion, one of the worst villains ever. There's a scene in the way he like smashes a girl's head into a table while she's snorting coke, and then he shoots a guy's dick off and throws her out of the fucking window like this is when villains were 
proper villains back in the 80s. So that's another movie that's like an absolute banger to check out, Chuck Norris Invasion USA. And then lastly, then we're going to fucking do adventures in babysitting. <laughs> so if you like your shit a bit more fucking <laughs> withdrawn and uh, a little bit nicer and easier viewing, then this is also a really good film to check out if you've not seen it already. Adventures in Babysitting. This is one that I watch like once, maybe twice a year. A real feel-good movie. And uh, it's... It's, it's just one of those films that you can always go back to and watch it. You can watch it with your family. There's a, there's a cut version and there's an uncut version. There's some dialogue in it that's a bit dated now and people are not as into it as they were back then and some words that are used that people don't like to hear anymore. But if you're going to look at it as like a product of its era, Adventures in Babysitting is awesome. And if you want to see Vincent D'Onofrio before he put all the weight on and he's looking hench and he's playing basically the character of Thor from Marvel, like the a better interpretation of Thor than Chris Hemsworth even does. I know that's a controversial uh, opinion, but he really was like the embodiment of Thor as a kid when I saw him in this movie. But that's another absolute banger. It's not got a lot of violence in it, but it's got a little bit in it. It's got scenes like the Warriors in it. It's got a lot of that like real like back alley street 80s vibe, which is awesome, but with that feel good family vibe as well going on. It's an awesome movie. So if you don't want to watch people getting melted by the blob and you don't want to see families getting bazookaed in their homes on Christmas Eve watching Invasion USA, then definitely Adventures in Babysitting would be another one of my recommendations to check out if you was going to walk into a VHS rental store back in the late 80s, early 90s. So I hope you enjoyed this video today, this little visit that we did recently to this awesome 80s VHS store. Like I said, it was very impromptu, very unplanned. We just rocked up and just filmed it and got whatever we got, but I fucking loved it and it was such a good vibe being there. Really did bring back all those memories of being in an 80s VHS shop. And then also just meeting and speaking to people that are as much into this stuff as I am. It's so rare that you get people that are genuinely into this stuff and go so far back watching these films all these years ago and didn't just get into it recently. So you can really get into like a deep dive conversation when you talk about some of these old movies and to me that's what this is all about this is what Slimehouse TV is all about connecting those people and bringing that community together so to me this was fucking awesome obviously I give him a unit 11 poster for his wall and I signed it in and we also signed the lockers in there because they've got some lockers in there the weirdest thing is as well I used to work at a tattoo shop and it was my idea that rather have a guest book have an old vintage locker that everybody that comes in signs it just more of that like-minded thinking I, I fucking love it so if you are able to go and visit the 80s VHS store out in Alfreton, then I would highly recommend it. If you want to know any information about the store, I'm going to put it all in the information down below, down in the comments and stuff, so that you can research maybe going and checking it out yourself. And if you're not able to get to this place, then I hope this video captured a little bit of that 80s VHS store magic for you. I hope that you think that we covered it well. And if you do have a chance to get there, then like I said, I would highly recommend it because this place was phenomenal. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this or if you've got a big VHS collection then please hit me up because I'd love to come and see it. I'd love to come check out your collection and showcase it on Slimehouse TV. And even more, I'd love to meet you and just be able to talk about some random old movies with you. Because there were so many years where I would mention movies to people and they didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a like. Let me know down below your favourite movie that you saw when you was in this VHS shop and which film you would have took home. Which film you would have rented back in the late 80s, early 90s if you were going to do a horror action double bill. If you'd like to see more stuff like this on the channel, then please let me know down below. I've done some other stuff like this in the past, checking out poster collections and stuff. So if you like this, please go back and binge the back catalogue because no doubt there's other stuff on this channel that you're going to enjoy as well. If this is your first time here at Slimehouse TV, I'm Theo Kane. I do videos every single week. If it's your first time joining this community, and I always call it a community because I've got so many cool people that check out these videos every week and always regularly commenting down below and stuff like that. So please introduce yourself. Let me know what you collect. Let me know where you're from, what you're into, and welcome to Slimehouse TV. If you want to hit me up but you don't want to do it publicly, the best place to do that is over on Instagram at Theo underscore Kane underscore Slimehouse. I'm very active on my Instagram. I try and post on there every day or every other day, so I post on there even more than I do on YouTube. And if you want to help support Slimehouse, help me make this channel bigger and better than ever, you can also consider becoming a Slime Renegade or a Slime Alliance member over on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Slimehouse TV. So like I said, if this is your first time checking out the channel, then welcome to Slimehouse. I'm Theo Kane. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, I'm I'm gone. Pow!